Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Harmer. This is part 16, and today we're talking about the chorus effect. So let's hop into a default patch here, and let's go to our effects panel, and we'll find our chorus located to the right-hand side of the distortion module. So first things first, chorus is basically, if you don't know, a poor man's unison. And if you're familiar with Fruity Flangus that I have lingering around here, it's basically the exact same thing. So if you know this, you'll know this. But if you don't, let's go into it a little bit deeper. So here's our order here, choosing how many different of these uh, copies that we'd like. So basically voices, and we have up to nine, very similar how we do have nine on unison up here. So for this, let's go to one order of one, and let's drag all these sliders down and go through them one by one and see what they all do. So let's put our mix at 100%. The reason being is that we want to hear 100% of this chorus effect to really see what's going on. It's default at 50%, which is your dry signal before it goes into the chorus, and then the uh, chorus effect equally. So 50 dry, 50 wet. And then at zero, there's going to be just your uh, your dry signal, so zero chorus, so kind of doesn't really make sense. And then you have a negative inverse polarity on the bottom. So let's put this all the way at the top at 100%, and let's have one order of one, and let's see what's going on here. So for our saw wave, we can see it's not really doing too much, but if we bring the separation down, we can see that these saw waves are not aligned anymore. And if we turn this off to zero, play the same note, and then froze it, and then look at it, and now our saw waves are the exact same. So we can already start to see the effect this, this course is having. So if we have this back at one, and then we'll look at this first knob called depth. The more we move this, let's move this maybe up here, we can see that now these are not aligned even the slightest. So if we bring these down, we can see how much further those are. We can see the the dancing or the moving around between these. So if I separate this back to normal here, we can see that the right side is basically moving left and right according to this slider here. And moving on, we have now the speed. So let's give it a little bit of depth so we can kind of see the speed going. And as we drag this up, we'll start to see these, these waveforms kind of dance with each other and sweep back and forth. That's the most I've seen a saw wave look like a saw. And the higher we go, the faster it's going to be. And if you didn't already figure, out, figure it out or know, the labels of the sliders for the first one is on the bottom, the second one's on the top, third's on the bottom, and so on and so forth. So next we're going to go for the delay, which has Dell. And this is going to be the delay from your signal to the added copies. And it's kind of difficult to hear on this setting. But I found a good one to check out is in this preset menu. If you didn't know, this arrow drops in a lot of cool presets to play around with. But if we select deep chorus, and we take a listen to that, let's bring this up a little bit. And that's with a delay at the very top. And spring to the bottom. So that's the uh, an easier way to see what that delay is doing there. So let's bring this back down to one. Let's put all our sliders back down. And then put this back at zero. And put our mix all the way back up. So let's go to maybe an order of six, for example. Let's bring this down because it's going to get a little bit louder. Change some of this depth, maybe some speed here, some delay, kind of mess it up a little bit here. So you'll notice here, this sound is kind of cool, but we can tell it gets really harsh on the left and the right hand side sometimes. And this spread can kind of help out that a little bit. So it's not really so lopsided and we can see here it's not as drastic as if it was just down here. If we're watching this line here, it goes to the center, then it's kind of heavy on this side. So with the spread all the way back up, this looks healthier and it sounds a little bit more balanced. And then let's move on to the cross. So let's go back down to order of one. Let's bring some of these down here. And this cross by default, it is negative 25. And basically what this is doing, if it's at the top here at the uh, 100%, what it's going to do is it's going to take information from the left-hand side and then apply that to the right-hand side. So to see this, if we had 0% here, we can see these two waveforms here. Let's just give a little bit of depth here. Or, yeah. And as we change this, 
We can see how they're starting to get mirrored on the right hand side. And if we do it on the left hand side, it's going to be inverted prior to that. Giving also an interesting sound. And then the mix we already covered. So definitely play around with this. Um, a very cool thing is, like I said, these presets here. It's really easy to just click something and have a good chorus sound to it. Maybe let's try it out thick. And then let's go to deep chorus, what we had before. And maybe if we don't like how fast it's going, we can always adjust the speed here. Then surround flanger. And last but not least, vibration. So that was basically it for the chorus. It's not too complicated, but generally we wanted to spend a little bit of time and kind of go through it and talk about it. So hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.